Folks, what do you call it when I sit down and I say, you know what, let's record a video in which I will roleplay like crazy, that I will not really edit all that much because I want you to see the entire character development and that will lead into a hopefully long-term series. You call that lunacy, impossible, and yet we also call it reality. I'm one proper Bavarian and I said to myself, I am playing so much CK3 on the side, I might as well record it. Um, I do want you to know that this won't be something that happens daily, maybe like every third or every fourth day you will see an episode like this, so this is really meant as a long-term form of series right here. We're going to be playing Conde Garcia Asnares of Carcassonne, probably not how you pronounce that at all. We are fairly old and we belong to a fairly old dynasty, at least, you know, hey, it's uh, one of the older and one of the larger ones in the game as of right now. Now let's start off this video by just saying a couple of things. Whether you like or not like these videos, just know that basically this thumbnail style is reserved for just these very videos, making it so that you will know going forward whether you want to click on the video or not. Uh, I'm also playing with a bunch of mods, you can see it as well, this is all graphical, I made some changes, you know, for example, Austria and Steiermark exist, exist and they are both marked Grafschaften, meaning that they are both marches, which they of course historically also were. Uh, we also got the Duke of Barcelona here as a Marquis, so that's the same situation right there. I changed a bit of the setup, nothing too bad, nothing too much, just a little bit. I changed the visuals, and outside of the visuals, which I can't link to you because that's a personal mod, I haven't uploaded it anywhere, outside of the visuals there will be the entire mod list on the Steam Workshop as the ultimate immersion mod list. Playing with that, I hope that you enjoy playing with it as well. The Thing is of course in the description, the link. That is what I wanted to say there. Right. Now let's talk about the historical context. We are quite somebody. We are Conde Garcia Aznares. As mentioned, we rule over Carcassonne, a castle that, well, has seen not better days, but more action-heavy days. Because of course Carcassonne is in a pivotal location. This castle determines whether any enemy from the south can pass into the north. That was its historical role, and that is also, of course, a big part of why, you know, the rulers right here in Iberia, why Barcelona is a march, and why they built so many castles. For example, over here, where you didn't have the threat of a unified and very strong Muslim force, these people barely built any castles until the 11th or 12th century, so we are in a very unique position. Feudalism has advanced a bit more, and yet it is a very special form of feudalism, at least historically speaking. The reason for this is that the entire region down here was not exactly a part of the core lands of the Frankish Empire, so even under uh, Charlemagne this wasn't the case. And this has led to something that is fairly rare on this map, at least I would say so. If you click on our house, we are house Dominguez, and our motto here is prayer, learning and bravery. I really like that because honestly it really fits this character, right? Generous, humble, chaste. We are a good person. That's just the way it is. We also have Arishas, but hey, who doesn't like money in the name of the church? But as you can see, we have plenty of houses and we have plenty of active house members. We have Musa here, who is landless, but he is a Muwaladi. Then we have Condelope. I believe he rules over just this county indeed. And then next up we have myself. This is Conde Garcia. Then we have Duke Asna of Aragua. So this is Ar Aragoy. I'm not actually certain. So he basically rules as a vassal in the Kingdom of Navarra. And then the King of Navarra is also a family member. And coincidentally, of course, the most powerful one of the Vasconia dynasty. So our actual dynasty head. And then last but not least, we have Duke Anso II, Jimenez of Basconiaco. He rules over all of this. Now, why is this so interesting? This is interesting because we rule in fairly old structures. We have lived here, similar to, for example, the Stammesherzogtum uh, legitimacy, you know, the way it worked down here. It was a very traditional form of state organization. We've lived here for ages. And that makes it so that we are quite a bit different. Historically speaking, going forward from this time, uh, the crown of France that people usually see as this centralized, this incredibly stable and incredibly powerful realm, would basically disintegrate. There was, in the 9th and the 10th century, there was a period where France was effectively falling apart right when the Carolingian rulers came to an end and the Capetian rulers, so the Robertine rulers, who I believe, there they are, uh, Count Aude of Anjou, right when they came to power. That was a disaster for the French crown and for about 60, 80 years, Vasconiaco was effectively independent. Now this might happen in the game, I'm not certain, but the important part to point out here is that this is the product of our dynasty. This is the Vasconia dynasty, we are just a member of a small house, I will be quite honest with you, I can't really find anything on 
Conde Garcia Aznares. I don't know whether he existed. I don't think, at least, in this time period, Carcassonne was under his control. But, hey, we'll take it, right? This gives us an interesting in into this dynasty. Of course, I'm going to wish the best of luck to our cousin, distant cousin, I assume, Erege Garcia Enekes of Navarra, because... Well, uh, <laughs> he has very powerful Umayyads to his south. And you know what? Let's actually take this opportunity. So, we have the entire dynasty right here. The founder is Lope II. Is that right? Yeah, that makes a lot of sense. Then down here, we have the King of Navarra. And we are, I believe, somewhere in this branch. Somewhere over here, indeed. Uh, this is us. Yeah, there you go. So we are distant cousins, uh, I assume at least that's the official title, with Erege Garcia Enekes. And we wish him the best of luck, but maybe eventually it will be our moment to shine and to become the new dynasty. And for the moment, of course, it is him, and uh, we don't really have anything to add to the dynasty of value. So, I'm very eager to see whether this sort of independence movement that existed without a doubt down here to say we reject the rule May, you know, that comes from the north of France, whether that will take place, we will see what we will do. Uh, Duke Bernard II of Toulouse is just very recently reinstated, or rather his family was reinstated. There was a short issue there going on, and we have Duke Bernard II of Toulouse now in control. I believe, actually, the Duke of Barcelona, yeah, look at that, this is the uh, Gelon, Geloness, I'm not sure, house, and he has a claim on all of Toulouse. We will see how that goes. He's also... Uh, Apparently married to the Count of Auvergne. Oh, well, connected via marriage. Yeah, look at that. He married the sister of the Count. Uh, that will be very interesting. I will limit my gameplay to who we are. We are a Count. I'm not really taking part in these big shifts of power, but we'll see how that goes. Now, this was the introduction. There's, of course, a lot going on. You will see uh, many, many changes. Uh, I think the last thing that we do before we really jump in is just to take a quick look at our culture, because we are Basque. We are... Yoskal, I need to look up how you pronounce it. We are cosmopolitan, which is really nice. Cultural acceptance gain plus 35%. And then all characters have a vast limit of plus 10. Different culture and faith opinion are plus 5. This is quite nice. We can be a multicultural realm. You will also see, by the way, that this is a bit of a different setup than it is in vanilla. We have Aquitanian instead of Occitan, and we have Gothico instead of Andalusian, and so Visigothic, and so on and so forth, right? That is because of a culture mod. They will splinter into their pieces. No, not too far into the future. We got Frisian as well, and of course Carantanian. Uh, all of those are hanging around. Oh yeah, you know what? Let me mention this one. Oh man. Uh, oh man, I love this so much. I created a divergent culture for the Berbers of the half seed Emirate. I did this because they would just sit here otherwise, not really able to do anything. And they're now the Ikritis, which I believe is uh, Arabic, something like that, right? Uh, or maybe Berber, uh, for the uh, for Crete. And they can raid. They can raid overseas because they have one of my favorite tenets, practiced pirates. And I hope that the half seed emirate either does a lot of bad things towards the Byzantines or that they can be under or brought under control by the Byzantine Empire because they are now a legitimate threat. Now, let's take a look at us. We, of course, speak our language. I speak it myself. We martial men only and we have our own aesthetics. That makes a lot of sense. The Basque aesthetics. We have the Visigothic code can enact high petition and equal gender law. That is pretty good. I would love to do that going forward if it is in the sense of our character. Right now, I don't think we need to enact another succession law. We don't really had negative opinions or negative experiences with succession, so I don't think there's a need to do that. But let's read the flavor text here. Although many of the older traditions of the Visigoths have long been wiped from the world, the children of the Pyrenees remember the ancient ways and how land was divided between sons and daughters practically, but fairly. Maybe we can bring that back. We are also mountaineers. Rough terrain expert commander trait is more common. Some commander traits and personality traits have extra mountain bonuses. I like that, that it changes existing traits. That's such a good mechanic. And we gain a decision to recruit mountain commanders. So this will be excellent, of course, if we were to fight in the mountains. We also get some bonuses here on defending in them. And then marital ceremonies. Skills from spouse counselor task plus 25%. That is pretty neat. Marriage acceptance plus 10. Cannot use any divorce interactions. I love that. We cannot divorce our spouse. You marry somebody and that is the way it is. The adulterer and fornicator traits are despised. So that is important to know. Uh, to know. Very disliked in our culture. 
and hostile scheme success chance versus spouses is minus 50%. Getting rid of your spouse if you are Basque is impossible. We need to interview some Basque people to find out whether that still holds true today. With this culture, the union of two people in marriage is considered a highly public and ritualistic affair. Of course, the saint, uh, sanctity, sanctity, there you go, the sanctity of marriage makes that very vital for us. Soldiers of this culture carry all they need to traverse mountains. That is a very mediocre flavor text. Now, we are, of course, ruling over Aquitanian uh, people here. Chivalry and parochialism is in their sort of spirit. Um, let's start the game, right? So, we are... A very pious man, I would say. We are chaste, humble, and generous. We adhere to the principles of the church. We are still a thrifty clerk and avaricious. We know how to deal with money. Let's take a look at this. We are the chancellor, really. I would have loved if we were the steward instead because that gives you extra money. But you know what? I will not reject the calling. If my duke says that I must be the chancellor, then I will serve him. Um, I don't think too highly of him, but that doesn't mean anything. A big part of that is, of course, cultural acceptance right here. It's also that he isn't uh, an unblemished person. He is uh, vengeful. He has a sin. But he might be somebody that can be recovered because he also has the temperate virtue. I don't think we feel very strongly about our, uh, our duke. I think, you know, we can cooperate with him. And I will cooperate with him. In fact, I will attempt to learn his language. A 16% chance. Jesus Christ. That is not good. But you know what? 16 years. Oh, my God. Uh, yeah, that's terrible. That is just truly atrocious. You know what? Why don't we take a look at our lifestyle? We are... We dove into stewardship right here. But I would say, since we are now a chancellor, since we do, you know, things, we, we talk to vassals, to peasants, to other lords, and we try to convince them that our lord is a good one, we shall focus a bit, maybe on foreign affairs focus. Makes sense to me at the very least, and might even make it so that I have a better chance at learning the language. Nope, not at all. Uh, right, this is learning the term, and you can see there's a bit of a string error here. Don't worry about it too much. That just happens sometimes. What I will do is, I will make this a bit easier for myself. I will I will hire a court tutor, and... Oh, you're perfect. Yeah, uh, I would love to hire somebody that actually knows the language. You know Aquitanian, you do not. I will, yeah, Almudis, I will appoint you, and we will try to learn that language indeed. You know what, I need to actually check here. You're, you talk Provenza uh, Provencal, I think this is... Uh, the one that you keep afterwards. Yeah, I believe that is the one. So, I can learn this language, and once the culture split, it still will serve me well. Now, I could marry. I don't know who my wife was that I had my son with, but I will not marry. I will, however, marry my son off. Oh my god, my son is a disaster. Uh, sadistic, fickle, craven, and a grey eminence. I love my child, but... My god, yeah, he did not turn out well, did he? I, I sort of... I, I sort of failed him there, I think. Now, <laughs> let's see who we can marry him to. In fact, I'm gonna... Give me a second. I would like to marry him away locally, if possible. Uh, and I think I found somebody. Hildeburg Tyrefair. She is of the house Tyrefair. And she does have some claims there on Toulouse. Because Toulouse was previously, of course, held by a different family. At least I believe that is where that is coming from. Oh, no. She was just married into house Chatenois. Who did hold it. Yeah, that is uh, the grandfather right there. And we're going to marry our son to her. She's already 33, but he's already 37. They can spend their life together, or their lives together, and hopefully, you know, have a good time. Maybe get some additional children. Now, she isn't the best person, but she's not exactly a sinful person. So I'm sure that I will come over this. She also doesn't actually speak our language, and I'm not learning hers. But, you know what, we're going to have this marriage, without a doubt. Uh, Asna already has a son anyway. But uh, let's take a look at this son, actually. Lopa Aznares. Why, why was this image so much cooler than the actual uh, child that then came up? This is our grandson. He is bossy and he is having a martial education. Speaking of our grandson, I think I will educate you myself. I'm not shy or anything, so you know what? Yeah, I, I will teach you the way of the world. I'm in line to inherit some titles. Oh, right. If, if he were to perish since... Wait a minute, I'm not in line. Oh, I'm third in line, right? If his two children were to perish and if he were to perish, but I'll be honest with you, that is very unrealistic. I don't think that will happen. I don't think we need a court physician right now. And this basically puts us to... Uh, yeah, let's let's unpause for the first time. Damn, it, it took me quite some time, but that is how these playthroughs work. Is there anything else I need to consider? I don't really want to promote my culture. It has to be pointed out, of course. And look at that. We do indeed have a happy marriage and... This does put us into an alliance, but we have this marriage, and Hildeburg now lives in our castle. Very nice. Uh, we have an Aquitanian, you know, county, it has to be said, but I don't think that needs to mean negative relationships. I think we can work this out. If I rule over you, if I'm not mistaken here, we will see a 
fairly fast increase. There you go, intermingling in realm, bordering my culture, that's indeed perfect. We are cosmopolitan, that is very nice, and yeah, I think we will sooner rather than later have a positive relationship with the Aquitanians, so I don't really see the issue there either. Now, there is of course a lot going on in the world, think about this. The Carlings are at the peak of their power, or well, they're just past their peak, but they are in a pretty good status. Oh, wait a minute. Duke Anso became the new dynasty head, so you are more powerful than the King of Navarra. Indeed, I mean, he is allied to Charles the Bold himself. Uh, how did this alliance come to be? Carloman married the daughter. Yeah, Princess Yimena here married Carloman, so that should be the heir, if I'm not mistaken. What happened to you, Carloman? No, he's not even the heir. He, he, I don't think he gets anything. Oh, he would get Aquitaine. Wow. This is a very smart marriage, actually. If Charles the Bold were to pass away tomorrow, our dynasty would have a very nearby ally, and more importantly, an ally that has basically me and then the other parts of my family under his control. Carloman taking over would be quite splendid indeed. But yeah, no, the Carlings are still incredibly powerful, technically speaking, although not really recognized by any of his relatives. We have Roi Louis II the Younger as the emperor of the entire well, Carolingian Empire of the Holy Roman Empire, that is of course what it technically was, it was the Western Roman Empire right there. Except, he's not recognized by anybody. I, I did this short, right, where I was talking about his uh, conflicts down here in southern Italy and how Adelchis then betrayed him, Adelchis that called him down there would later on betray him, imprison him and then exile him from southern Italy. And every time something bad happened to Juan Louis II, it would be King Ludwig the German that came down with an army and said, this is my land now, and every time he would turn around, because, well, actually, Roi Louis II still lived. What a nice family indeed. Now, we don't have any artifacts, I believe a house artifact. Let's actually, you know what, let's take a look at your court, my dear cousin. Um, He has one artifact, that is the arm of Saint George, Jesus. He has the arm itself, I assume the sword arm, right? Yeah, look at this throne room, I really like the way it looks. Do we have a... Unibrow, that's crazy. He actually does speak Romans. Oh, that is interesting. He is prepared. I guess he's a much better educated multicultural man. You know, that's just the way it is. I don't think I can sway you, right? No, that would abandon the language learning scheme. But as you can see, he already has, uh, well, the banners right here, right? These are dynasty banners, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, this is the house banner, actually. Why, why aren't you putting up the dynasty banner? I guess it will take some time. I could fight him for that. But I'm not going to unless I become the dynasty head. I respect our dynasty head because I don't have a nice royal court the way that he does. So let's just let him be, yeah? Hmm, what do we have here? Delicate affairs. I have heard you are focusing on improving the realm's status with its neighbors, father. That is indeed true. Yep, yeah, I mean, that is exactly what I am doing. I am trying to go deeper into diplomacy and that is also my task here in the council. Asna approaches me amicably. I have long taken an interest in these affairs and I'd be happy to offer you my help gaining Sultan Abu Mundir's trust. We are family after all. Oh my god. A mission to Sultan Muhammad ibn Abd al-Rahman? Really? You want to you want to talk to the Umayyad Sultanate? You have connections over there. My son might be more worthwhile than I originally anticipated. Um I can make him become my friend. How could I say no to that, right? I can I think I can handle him myself, or he's not worth the effort. No, you know what? Thank you very much, I appreciate that. I Maybe I'm sending a small letter, or maybe we are sending something that could be interpreted if you, you know, are the Sultan. We are sending something that could be a tribute, and the Sultan appreciates that. I don't think we are eye to eye with the Sultan, we can't get that done. But yeah, no, I'm friends with my son, how could I not be? I mean, we are one family. This is all about standing together, because in a different world, you know, <laughs> if we don't stand together, Carcassonne wouldn't be in our hands any longer, as it wasn't historically. Um, and we just picked up a new dynasty legacy. Let's just take a look at that, shall we? Bounches Loins, so that is kin, meaning that we have attraction opinion plus five. I mean, honestly, this makes sense. This is family-oriented, not the bad family-oriented. This is family-oriented, and that is our culture. That is Basque after all, so... I do really like this. We get additional child opinion later on, and Dynasty Member gets better education traits. Yeah, I think this, uh, honestly, the AI really understands where I'm going with the roleplay here, I would say. By the way, I really love, like, this slight transparency that I brought into this uh, visual mod here, making it so that you can actually see the trees, but it's not too much. I'm at least a big fan of the visuals right here. Ooh. You know what? Let's actually check our council. We have Kvalimir. Why are you here? <laughs> How did you find your way over here? Uh, I'm so confused how, how we found his way over. You know what? Let me actually check this. Who's yours? 
You have an Aquitanian Chancellor, so he has the right form of Chan or rather the right form of uh, Bishop, while I have this Slovene, Slovien, or well, uh, uh, Slovakian Bishop right here. Interesting. Then we have Asna, of course. I love Asna. He's my best friend. What a great guy. Uh, Arto is Aquitanian. Don't really love him, but honestly, he's not a bad person, so I think he's, uh, he's uh, fair to have around. And then we need a new Marshal. Now, I could move this fella over, but I don't think I will. Arto. No, yeah, all of you are already assigned. You know what? I need somebody that can actually deal with the military. And I will spend 15 bucks. My tough people, the Eoskuldunak, can navigate the most treacherous mountain pass. If I want to move and fight in the mountains, I can call upon a seasoned guide to help my army find its way. I think uh, if we want to make Carcassonne to a defendable position, then we need that exact person. I'm certainly not a warlord, and, uh, you know, side effect is he can serve on the council as well. Egidio, there you are already, and my god, you're a good guy. I don't like at all that you're sadistic. Don't talk to my, my uh, son, you're gonna be a bad influence because he already is sadistic. But yeah, look at that. And just like that, we have a pretty good marshal. Not very healthy, but a pretty good marshal indeed. Ah, I understand. Oh, and I didn't even notice this earlier. This is why our marshal left. He was actually assigned Alibi. No, Albi. <laughs> I hope he does have an alibi as well, but he was assigned a, a count, a, a county by our duke here. Hmm. Poaching talent, huh? Poaching talent indeed. And he isn't even that talented. Now, I do hope that this doesn't mean that I was thrown out of the council, but indeed it doesn't. So, hey, listen, if you want to have that guy hold a county, I, I trust him. He seems to be a good guy. Did we ever hire? Oh, yeah, we did hire a court tutor. The learn language scheme power went up indeed, but my god, it still will take 16 years. I mean, let's be real here. Learning a language at our age, in our disposition, I don't think it is a, that easy a task. And we immediately have some heretics. Duke Ghostfried of Normandy is announced to the world that he and his vassals have converted to Catharismus, so the Cathars have risen. Having become disillusioned with the teachings of the Catholic priests, the nobles of Normandy no longer consider the clergy to be righteous and true. As Cathari, they believe their new faith properly aligns with the will of God, and they are distancing themselves from their former religious institutions. Obviously, as somebody that respects the church and is respected by the church, I won't... Well, I mean, he doesn't like us, but let's be real here, that's just because of some joke modifiers that the game puts at the start of the game on us. But I will not convert. Uh, I'm rather worried, though, that if this were to spread too much within France, we may have a very, very difficult future kingdom ahead. Let's take a look. Yeah, we got a couple of people, but oh, wait a minute. The Duke of Barcelona turned. He adopted Catharism. So we're looking at a heretic right across the Pyrenees. I mean, that makes it even more important that we reinforce Carcassonne because honestly, whether they're Muslim or whether they're Cathar, I don't think there's that big a difference. Sure, they may say they are pacifists, but I wouldn't believe this. You have to see that when you live in a sort of situation where, where we live, or how we live, where there are these mountains between us, of course we trade with them, of course we are the central point that connects, you know, everything south of the Pyrenees with the north of the Pyrenees, but how often do we really talk to this guy? When we all of a sudden hear that he rejects the message of the Pope, I mean, he's basically somebody that should be destroyed. I can't do that, but hey, he should definitely be somebody that isn't around for long. Oh yeah, look at this, by the way. So Ludwig the German uh, gets Bavaria as his primary title, so that when he dies, we don't get this really weird split. Instead, Bavaria and Germany split quite in a, in a nice fashion. I like that. And look at that, our scheme is progressing, and good thing that we did get this court tutor. My court tutor Almodis has been aiding me day and night in my efforts to learn Provençal. Her dedication to the art of teaching is inspirational. There's not a day where I'm not brought a Provençal, a Provençal letter to read, a learned Aquitanian man to converse with, or an extraordinary mnemonic to, uh, rhyme. Truly, I would not be this far along without Almodis' help. Only at 16% still. She's doing her job well. Um, I am generous. Hmm, oh, uh, but I'm also humble. Wait a minute. Attended by court tutor. You deserve the reward. Yes, okay, I definitely need to... <laughs> I get a critical stress break because I'm generous and humble. This would be so out of character. I'll give you five bucks. That's perfectly fine. Maybe we can become friends going forward. She does seem to be a learned person. Now, how long is this going to take us? 13 years. Honestly, we might be able to get it done. Ooh, and look at that. Louis won the war here. I'm actually going to mark him as important. I'm going to mark all of the Carlings as important. 
so that we learn about their shenanigans. Uh, he won against the Southernites, not really that big of a surprise. He is, oh, the Romans. Vasilevs Vasilevs is aiding the Bulgarians against the Magyars. Wait a minute. Oh, it's it's over. <laughs> he didn't get it done. It's a white piece. So the Magyars will never migrate, which is, of course, an interesting predicament right there. How's Jorvik doing? They are definitely definitely destroying Northumbria. Uh, wouldn't have it any other way, I guess. And yeah, I mean, we are still holding it together. Let's see. I would. I think I would also like to mark you as important, although I think you already do give me notifications. Then our family members. I'm actually going to mark all of the ones that are really relevant. There are two more that are in Biano and in uh, Lapurdi, but I don't think I'm going to mark them, at least for the moment. Religious refugees. Marquis Bernard rules over the nearby Quens of Gérone, which is home to a large number of devout Catholics. The Cathar, uh, the Cathar Marquis would easily, uh, would easily persecute the faithful Catholics living there, and it is my responsibility to protect them from his hostile influence. We talked about this. I am a very pious person. I am not zealous by any means, but I respect the church and its teachings, and man, that he is now actually prosecuting them, or well, persecuting them, or could be persecuting them, that, that is terrible. I could get a claim here. I could smuggle them. We cannot allow him to oppress the faithful. Am I am I aggressive enough? I am humble, I am generous, I am chaste. Honestly, I might be aggressive enough. Uh, I could also smuggle in as many Catholics as possible. Religious refugees gives me more levy and uh, greater holding taxes. And then uh, Jérôme is of course suffering. He dislikes me and send an envoy to Bernard to discuss their treatment. Ooh, you know what? Obviously, the, the optimal choice here is to get this claim, but I will try to talk to him. I am a diplomat. I will do my best to not rule via the sword. Not that I really have many swords, but to rule via the word. So I will go and send some envoys. He welcomes them. All right, maybe I had you, you know, in the wrong light. Maybe you are pretty okay. He does seem to respect them. And that gives us, uh, let's take a look at this modifier here. Popular opinion plus 20, all right. They're still negative, obviously, because it's a hostile faith, but good to know, good to know. The Cathars aren't mistreated, so I mustn't go against them. Now, we do want to definitely go into the diplomat direction. Doesn't give us a significant benefit, but that is exactly why we are going into the focus anyway. Inspired moderation. Following the death sentence of a lowly thief, I asked my grandson Lope what he thought. He claimed he had learned a lesson about not reaching for more than one can handle. You know what? That is a good idea. I, I think that is a great idea. I was worried that this child would become a bit of a brat because he is bossy, but he seems to be all right. Uh, what else would you would you be good for? Stewardship? But honestly, I'm not gonna min-max your education. That is fine. We could try to make you just. Mm. We're not temperate ourselves, but we are chaste, to be fair. I think I'm, I'm gonna try to teach you about justice. Much like... The Marquis in the south is just when it comes to the population that is Catholic down there. You should be just when it comes to the law. You must be taught the proper execution of the law indeed. Mm, and look at that. Our liege has trouble. He is at war here, it seems, with Prince Pepin of Italy. Oh my god. A, a carling. A major carling with a claim to all of Italy is aiding in this war. But he's just a lowly count, of course. And... It is Ramnulf II of Guyenne, so of Aquitaine, of main Aquitaine anyway, pushing the claim for this county of KRC. Uh, and it is Wulgreen's claim. Let me take a look at this. So Wulgreen is, uh, of course, a vassal to the Duke of Guyenne. So, uh, yeah, I mean, I think this is going to be successful, right? 1,804. Listen, if I were either a march or if I were the actual marshal of our liege, I would come to his aid, but... I don't think that the northern wars are any of my concern. I, I don't think I need to get involved there. And quite frankly, I think Garcia Aznares is very happy that he can convince himself of the fact, of the idea that he doesn't need to get involved. Because warfare is uh, not exactly a strength. And I think Alij will definitely lose this unless he gets some sort of alliance. Wouldn't he get... Why, why aren't you marrying off your son, I wonder? Oh, and we are being raided. Oh, it's not us. Okay, it is uh, just over here. Oh, yeah, we are playing with the Prisoner of War mod. Look at that. They captured Ethelred. Who are you? You are the Raiders of Vestergotland. They have Ethelred, Rudolf. Who else? Oh, I, I can't... Oh, there you go. Gunhilde. Hmm, Ethelred. Were you actually in, in Wessex? Wait, where, where did you get this guy from? Who, who is this? If we were to defeat him, we could get 
these prisoners of war, of course, you're not actually going to defeat them. Oh, it's East Anglia. Oh, and interesting, East Anglia survived. Look at that, Kerning Edmund still rules. It is Jovik that has been destroyed. Well, it has been taken by the Vikings. I wonder how this will develop. I, I really do hope that we might see the Dane Law decision here. But either way, currently, everything is still looking pretty okay. I will be calling it here. Oh, wait a minute. Let's just check before we call it for today. There is a war against the tyranny of War Charles II. I really don't care. This war definitely will be lost. I, I, I will just say <laughs> outright to lose will definitely lose this county, which will put his power in jeopardy. But I don't think we necessarily need to rebe rebel against him. We'll see for the moment. Thank you for tuning in. I will see you whenever the next episode comes out. Make sure to check out the Ultimate Immersion Modelist. Leave a favorite. And uh, yeah, check it all out. I'll see you later. Alligator.